Hey gamers, welcome back to the channel. We're jumping back into DC Dark Legion. We have a brand new test build of the portrait version of this game. If you're not too familiar with kind of the history, we'll go over that in a minute. But really what I want to focus on in this video is what has changed in this portrait version because there was a ton of feedback that was given before. Did they listen? Did they incorporate any of that feedback? There's a lot to discuss here, so let's get into it. All right, and welcome back. Let's go ahead and give a brief history about this game. This game was announced last year around this time, give or take a few months, and then it went into a brief test, and then it was gone for a while, and then earlier this year in January of 2024, we had a series of staggered tests that went eventually into a beta and then into an early access. That was all the landscape version of the game. Landscape is still available to play, and people are over there playing it, although less and less people, <laughs> especially since we found this new portrait version of the game. If you haven't seen my first video on this, I'll put a link up to it right over here. But through feedback and internal conversations within the company and DC and stuff like that, it seemed as if they had changed direction and this is what they came up with. During the first test, there was a whole lot of feedback provided. So really what I wanna focus on here is what's changed in this portrait version of the game? Has it improved? Did they incorporate any of the feedback? And I'm happy to say yes. So let's go over a few things. Also, one thing I want to share with you, uh, Ty Vaca, a member of our Discord and viewer, very cool guy, um, has put a lot of information together for us. So I'm going to share that information with you as well. He's got spreadsheets, a lot of information there if you just want to take through and read through it. He's got a lot of the stuff um, in a, like a, uh, not a spreadsheet, but a, almost like a PowerPoint type view going over some of the changes and stuff we're talking about here as well. All right, so let's start with the war room. One of the biggest pieces of feedback was you could not reach out to your league for help with the war room timer and the timers were huge. Now you can at least use drones on your war room. So after that feedback, they did allow some of that to happen in the landscape version, but you needed to be lower than the top 50% as far as war room level of your server. Now you can go in here and you can use drones as much as you want to go ahead and help with those timers. Also, the amount of time it takes to build your war room has reduced as well. I'm gonna have to put a side-by-side -side comparison. I tracked all of the timers for landscape. I'll have to track the timers for this as well once we know that this goes into a more of a long-term beta or early access. We don't know how long this is gonna be up and available. It was only available for a week last time hoping for a couple of weeks this time just so we can get more experience with this version. But they did help with War Room timers, which is absolutely awesome. Also, the requirements to upgrade your War Room isn't as steep as they used to be. So uh, when I just take a look at here and what I need to upgrade, look at this. To go from War Room 11 to 12, I only need to upgrade my research, my research laboratory to level eight. Before, and in the landscape version, I would need to get my war, my research laboratory up to level 11, the same level as the war room, then I can go ahead and upgrade my war room. So they've helped with that as well. Again, overall reduction. That was a huge piece of feedback throughout the entire history of playing this game so far is just how many timers that you have to wait on. So they did help with that, which I think is pretty cool. Let's see, another piece of feedback um, from the last portrait version of the game was the the view of the battle changed so combat changed quite a bit instead of this like diagonal type view is more kind of a straight up and down uh you couldn't manually um target your ultimates there's no more captain role so you, you can't have your captain and then move your captain around the board but let's go into a battle so again we still have that more up and down look i would like to see a camera one camera two type view but now with our ultimates we can move our ultimates around. So they did bring that back, which I think is great, especially for those of you who really like to aim your ultimates and just have a little bit more strategy on where on where to place them to help with the overall team. Boom. We're gonna go over some new characters here in a minute. All right, we'll auto it now and we'll probably gonna fail this actually. So with that, I think that was huge. I don't know that they're going to bring captains back um, just in this version. It might not make as much sense. So with that, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at a few other things that they have changed in the game. Quite a few, actually. So, yep, yeah, I'm not ready for that battle just yet. Let's talk about heroes. 
let's go to our roster. So much has changed within the roster. So we have two new characters. Uh, one of them is Vixen here. Great support character that increases the attack. She's she's uh, she's who? She's Batgirl, but she someone mentioned that on stream. She's Batgirl, but instead of crit up, she gives attack up, which is great. Because when you take a look at characters like Green Lantern here, Green Lantern, his healing now is based off his attack. Whereas in the landscape version, it was ba based on HP. I don't know if that's an error, if that's the way it's supposed to be. But having Vixen there to increase the attack of your team is going to help him and boost up his, his healing. So there were some changes there as well. A couple of other changes that you'll notice. Uh, let's see. Let's run through roster here really quick. Look at this. Penguin. Penguin is now mythic. Whereas before he was legendary. Let's see who else as we kind of run through this. Um, let's see. Look at this. Cyborg is now a mythic. Uh, Dr. Fate is now a mythic. They were both legendaries before. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, there we go. We've got Poison Ivy as a mythic. I think there's some. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Two-Face is a mythic. One thing I noticed, too, is look at these mythics. You've got mythics that require... 10 shards in order to unlock, and then you have mythics that require 40 shards. I don't know what the difference is between there. I think if you're gonna have rarities, it should be the same, unless there is a specific reason why you have mythics at 10 um, and mythics at 40. Or are, is this an error? Are they supposed to be legendaries? I don't know. But uh, that's quite a bit of change there. So uh, we still have Stargirl who was brought in during the last version of the portrait mode test. So, yeah, so quite a few changes there as well, and something pretty massive. Um, and I want to switch over to a spreadsheet. So, Taivaka is a member of our Discord and a viewer and has co com combined a lot of good information. There's been quite a few changes with legacies as well. So, we, so we'll talk about that here in just a second. The only other thing that I really want to mention here on this... Uh, shelter, they have definitely improved the shelter and they've added certain nuances. Like I can click this right here. We're gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna pick a response and then I'm going to get some resources. I don't know that that's necessarily needed in the game. Let me grab this here really quick. I don't know that that's necessarily needed here. Um, I think what would be cool here is instead of, you know, clicking on, clicking on people and having a conversation with them, that something here that we should have a, like on typical idle games, you have a chest or a truck or whatever that passively collects your resources. I think that's what we should have here. Just something on the map here that passively collects your resources that you would normally get as you are clicking on these characters um, so that then you can go in every now and then and you can get those resources. So I think that would probably be helpful here rather than clicking on uh, different characters. I just don't think it's needed. Just my two cents there. Um, let's see. I'm sure there's some other stuff that I'm missing, but I think you get the gist of it. I do like the direction that is going. Um, I like the improvements that they made. I really like the fact that they are paying attention to the feedback that's provided through the surveys and through Discord and all of us creating content and stuff around it. So uh, let's switch on over to Tyvaka's uh, PowerPoint, and um, I want to share his spreadsheet with you too if you really kind of want to dig into a lot of the details that he's collecting for us so give me just one minute we're going to switch on over there all right so again Tyvaka put a bunch of information together uh looking at changes within portrait mode and how they're different from landscape mode and things like that um so we've got this information we're going to go through also he's got a spreadsheet i'll put links down below because he'll probably have them updated before i put videos out um on some of these changes so if you really want to stay up to date with it definitely check it out uh, but just going through some of the information here, just taking a look at old characters given that aren't playable. Um, Aquaman, not available currently in the version. We've got Croc, though. One thing I didn't mention is we do have playable Croc. We have not had him playable before, and he's pretty good. I like him. Last version, we had uh, Stargirl, like I had mentioned. Uh, we got a couple new characters here. I didn't go over Adam. So we have Vixen, great support character. We have Adam, a great warrior. The only thing about Adam that I tend to not like so much, um, and maybe we need to build him up more and unlock more skills and stuff, but when he uses his ultimate, he dies. <laughs> um, so he, he came in super handy for uh, Dark Ivy, though. So so we got another uh, a couple cool characters there. A couple characters that were removed from the roster here as well. Here's uh, here's all of the mythics. 
um, that weren't mythic before. Um, so I missed some of the some of the uh, heroes here, like uh, Raven and Batgirl, uh, Black Canary over here. So all these characters now are mythics, and they were not mythic before. So quite a few changes there as well. Uh, the reason why I want to go through this here is the legacies. A lot of the legacies that are not mythic, or all of them, there are no legacies now that have additional skills attached to them that is not a mythic. So basically all the legacies are doing are providing stat boosts like attack and defense and things like that. So all of that was removed. I don't know if that was intentional or if those will come back, uh, but quite a few changes there that we noticed uh, with the legacies. If we take a look at some of the rarities that's changed, we've got Mind Control Hat was that, uh, that was epic and now it's mythic. You got the Joker Venom was legendary and now it's mythic. So there's a lot of rarity changes as well. Purple Ray Radiation here, Legendary, now Mythic. If you want to find out kind of what they're, what they were before and the descriptions of their skills and stuff, it's all in uh, Taivaka's uh, spreadsheet over here as well. So you can kind of dig into that. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to, to use his, his uh, information here for. Just a lot of legacies now that don't have a skill attached to them and only provide a stat boost. Um, again, if we go over to his spreadsheet here, it's got a lot of information here. Um, I don't know where is his legacy info. It's right here. So you can see what they were before. Here's their uh, legacy rank. Um, now that they're legacy, legacy ranks. <laughs> and then what they did before. So we're going to be doing a lot of comparisons, providing the information to you. Those of you who are playing through betas and stuff like that, this will be pretty interesting to you. But I think... Those uh, people, those of you who are not currently playing the game, and those of you who may be only starting the game once it hits global, a lot of this isn't going to matter because you're not going to see the difference there. Uh, but they are making a lot of changes. That's really the whole reason for this. They're making a lot of changes. They're listening to a lot of the feedback. They're trying to make the best DC game possible, and we need it, people. <laughs> we need a good DC mobile game. All right, everybody, that is what I had for you. Loving the new portrait version of the game. I like the fact that they've incorporated a lot of the feedback that we provided, and I can't wait to see where this version takes us, and especially once uh, once we figure out when Global's going to be. So, all right, everybody, that is what I had for you. As always, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time.